Hey, this is Gatorx, and we're back with those Illustrials starter decks here. One for the uh, for the Chronodile and the Ferrogeist. So uh, yeah, thank you again to A Drive and Illustrials team who sent me everything in that big old box, and we're getting through all of those stuff now. Uh, if you'd like to see everything else, so actually I think there's just you know what the two big old booster boxes uh, left. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about these starter decks because uh, I'm actually really excited for them. Really interested. I've got a lot to say. So here we are with that plastic off. Let's go ahead and get into these now. Um, I did open up the Frostfall decks in a video, but I didn't get a chance to, you know, get to editing that and uh, talking about that, but, uh, so let's go ahead and just reiterate a few things here. So, each, uh, starter deck nowadays, uh, they cost, uh, 25 instead of 20 before, but I think that the changes that they made, including three booster packs, was a much better choice. I assume that they probably had some troubles getting the cost down, uh, to be much lower, so instead of, you know, dropping below 20 in any way, uh, they just added in three booster packs, which are, you know, pretty easy to produce, because they're already producing a bunch, so it makes it a lot more of a fairer price, because, you know, you figure three booster packs being about five bucks each, that's already 15, uh, bucks off that, uh, you know, or 15 bucks added to your value, so that is cool there, so, uh, yeah, you're gonna get your three packs there, you're gonna get your special die, which is, uh, you know, they change up every so often. This one is the new one for Solar, so looks really nice, and it matches. And, of course, you get your deck and a rulebook as well. And uh, this box, I guess you could use that for storage, but uh, rulebook's great. There's the um, there's the deck. Let's go ahead and uh, get out the Ferrogeist one, which is going to be basically the same deal. It's going to be the exact same die. We already looked at that. It's going to be your three packs in there. We'll set those to the side and open those at the end. Then your rule book and a deck. So let's go ahead and cut off the plastic and we'll take a little look at each of these decks. Oh boy, it does feel like there's a lot to get through, especially with all the plastic there. But let's go ahead and take a little look at the uh, Chronodial deck. Now this one, pretty excited for because, you know, big croc, big dial there. And uh, the, the effect is pretty good. From what we're seeing, you know, this could potentially be uh, a really good deck. You know, it being an actual win condition. Uh, let's go ahead and separate things because at the end of the deck, you're going to have all your spirits, of course, which are... Uh, very necessary, obviously, to play the game. That's that's what the whole game revolves around. So, the breakdown looks like it's going to be mostly water, some solar there, and uh, and then a bit of a bit of lunar. So that's pretty cool. And you know, you get your little helpful card there. But the actual deck is going to have that hollow chronodial here. That's pretty neat. You're going to have your sun dials, and we got uh, three of those. You're going to have your noma dials, your pluckies. Here, let me make sure this is actually centered. We got some foamy. This is an older card, or you know, from the first set. Same with Tadpuff, but they're good for water. Uh, you know, mostly foamy. Foam is a good floater. Galaxy, same deal there. Aphros, great for water, of course. Some Dratagua. That one is from the uh, not the first set, but the previous set, second one. Got some Eddie, brand new guy there, and some Kurabis, and a uh, Porcupine there. So those are all your Elestrals you're getting. Uh, it is very, very water heavy. But of course, Chronodile, actually Chronodile needing two Water Spirits and only one Solar. Uh, I guess, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. So I'm pretty excited for that. Again, being a big croc, and I really liked all the Water decks before, and Water has a lot of power behind it, and I feel like this might just be what it needs to break through. In terms of runes, we got our Nectar of the Gods here, our Draw 2, the Ambrosia, very useful card, Poseidon, and uh, Trident Poseidon. Great, they just give you the Poseidons right there. Atlantis, uh, Rock and a Hard Place, two of those. That's cool, that's a good one. Got Argo, this is a great card as well. You're only getting one of those, though. Uh, Gorgon's Gaze, Alter the Stars, and some Tsunami. So again, great uh, staple stuff. All, all of these are older except for um, Rock and a Hard Place and Argo. Those are brand new cards. Uh, yeah, but everything else is older. But it's good that, you know, they're kind of keeping these as evergreen stuff for the uh, for the starter decks, of course. So it's it's very much, it's very easy. Like, if you happen to buy two of these, you're in a really good position. Like, two copies of any deck because that gives you, like, a good play set of a bunch of other things and a bunch of good staples here. And it uh, gives you you know, six packs that you're going to be able to open. So, um, I was just saying is that I think that this, the way that the decks are now, they make a much better entry point to Elestrals if you, lit yeah, literally just buy two. That's basically what you would be spending on maybe, like, uh, an Elite Trainer Box, say, in Pokemon. But it also gives you, you know, actually something to play, as well as, you know, some good uh, collection that you can start building up there. Let's take a look at the Ferrogeist card. Now, this one, we did pull a Ferrogeist from uh, the little packs that we did before, and it was a regular rare, so that's pretty neat. It's getting the hollow treatment here, and this dude, I love the look. I just love the look of these guys. Well, both of these guys, uh, we got some, you know, we're getting some Egyptian stuff there, some Egyptian theming, which actually, you know, uh, does fit with uh, with Elestrals, uh, you know, with uh, Greek, Egypt, that connection there. Got some Calf Mill there. Love these little guys, and a Pharamel there. 
uh, you know, the little, you know, the little guys to go into it. And I, I also like the idea of the big bosses of these being, you know, mixtures of solar plus something else. Uh, oh gosh, I just love the purple look on these. I can't wait till we get more, even more lunar cards. So we got some uh, Dratara, Lumaru, uh, Pegleam, Soulbell, Soulstocks, uh, Corvashine, Plucky, uh, Crip. All right, all right. Cypromo, Cypromo. Gotta get used to these names. And uh, ooh, Pandalence and a Spectrus. Ooh, these are yeah, these are some good ones. I love. I, abso I absolutely love the look of these. The the <laughs> dude, the purple looks so good in these. Honestly, I'm not saying that everything else looks bad, but I think like oh gosh, just purple looks absolutely insane and so crazy in these. So those are all your left shows you're getting. For runes, you're gonna get those Ambrosia there. Apollo, great. Oh yeah, I realized, yeah, Apollo didn't come in the other one. But, um, okay, so if you do want Apollo there, I don't think you, uh, if you're gonna be playing Chrono Dow as a deck, you're gonna need Apollo. Obviously, you wanna lean into that water. Uh, so this one, this deck here is a lot more solar heavy. Uh, so we got Apollo there, Temple of the Sun, two of those. That is, okay, that is a stadium. And it looks like stadium is also getting the, the little treatment there where it's being labeled. Uh, that's something we saw with all the brand new counter runes in uh you know as of as of here and actually it looks like everything is just getting labeled every type of rune divine did i not notice that before with some of the other ones how did i not notice that with everything else i was opening in the set either way that's a great thing because i was you know i was gonna say i never got around to making like my big big review of elestrals i'm kind of glad i waited though but that was one of my big concerns is that i think the game had a pretty big clarity issue in terms of uh, being able to see things and understand things especially if you're teaching somebody new so i gotta say that's great that we got all these here we got all these uh, actual labels here uh sorry let me go back temple of the sun first light Golden Fleece. Ooh, that's an interesting one there. We got Argo as well. Having more of those is good. Shield of Achilles, another good staple. Poison Tipped Arrow, good staple. Altar Stars. Dense Fog, that is another one of the new cards here. Uh, again, for Lunar. And uh, that's some good that's some good suppression there. And I forgot to separate all these, but these are all your spirits. Looks like it's going to be mostly Solar, mostly Illuminate, and then some Owloon there in the back. So let's go ahead and move on to those actual packs that are included here. Again, you're going to be getting three per starter deck. So opening both of these, we got six to look at here. But again, I think that's a great idea to uh, just kind of like help fill these things out and kind of, uh, you know, really make the cost work out a lot better. So let's get to these first pack here. And yes, I'm very excited to start your, you know, continue building my collection here. So we got that Temple of the Sun. Got a Guardian of the Fleece. Ooh, okay, so that does tie into it. Uh, that's pretty neat. I really do need to read all of these. Give these all a good read. Bloom. Don't poke the bear. Follow the wisps. Soul stocks. Uh, Faramel. Yep, that's one of the guys we saw there. Uh, Barabog. The rare is gonna be a Heliolith. Ooh, hoo, hoo, boy. Uh, yeah. And you know, I'm I'm realizing this now. Uh, I'm, I'm real okay hopefully now you'll see the little sparkle effects in here because I for I realized I forgot to add those in my in my opening of the other thing but hopefully we'll have them here heliolith that is pretty cool haven't uh you know now we have more of the the big golems there uh for you know for all the other elements again I gotta read all these but uh from what I know these guys are all pretty good and useful there or at least you know they try to be next pack So we got another Don't Poke the Bear, a Follow the Wisps, a uh, Dratara, Sundial, look at the boy there, Glimbat, Polzer, <laughs> Bow of Apollo, get more of those good, uh, First Light, get more, that's great. We got a Cycle of Venom there as the rare of the pack, and I, I, was, losing, I was losing track of, um, of where the rare is. Next pack here. So we got a... Corvishine, Plucky, pa Pandalence, uh, Mudlet, uh, Boltuga. Okay, okay. I see. I see the game we're playing there. Got an, uh, a No Cell, or Anacel. Got a Fulgaris. Got a Jav Javalukan. Uh, the rare is going to be a. Ooh, an Arcolith. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we didn't have a Thunder one for these. We're getting all the big Liths here. Yeah, but uh, again, so they all have like different conditions where you can just normal cast them right out, you know, for being two spirit costs there. They get your, you know, get you some big guys on the field already. So, so far for three packs, there was some pretty good two hollows in there. Uh, moving on to the second half, let's get these open. So, in here, we got a Toxa Swarm, a, fi oh, okay, a Rhinim, a Temple of the Sun, Guardian of the Fleece, Bloom. Uh, okay, skin, okay, 
Scavacole. Scavacole. Okay. So I gotta get used to all these new names. Humbust, Porcutide, and an Exaltus for the rare of a pack. Ooh, that is pretty nice. We get more get more of these guys. Uh, next pack. Starting things off with a larva cell here. A uh, Veratuka, Toxic Swarm, Rhynymph, Temple of the Sun, Scavacol, a Humbust, a Porcutide. The rare is gonna be a Circle of the Sky. Uh, with that new artwork. I don't know, man. I keep getting so many circle list guys. I, I I don't know how many I need, but of course this is the one that, uh, you know, we, now we got uh, Luminate and Owloon there. So, hey, that's a hollow. Last pack of this little opening here. And we've got a Calfmel here, a Corvashine, a Plucky, Pandalence, Mudlet, uh, Javlucan, Morfrost, Batform, Bat, is that bat with two T's? We got a new Morfrost. Uh, Polzer, the rare of the pack is going to be a Curvus. Ooh, boy. And actually, yeah, that's also interesting. That seems to be a hollow in the set when we got one in the starter deck there. So I guess, you know, also kind of shows you or, you know, gives you another Curvus to add to your deck. Neato. Neato. But hey, those are pretty good ratios for uh, four hollows in three packs. Hopefully, you know, that carries over in other things. But, or maybe, maybe I just got some good luck this time around. But yeah, those are my pools. Either way. This is my thoughts on the starter decks here. Like I said, I think they're a much better deal than before, uh, especially, you know, with the, I'll admit it, with the base set, I think there were just too many starter decks. I understand that, yeah, you had to, um, you had to get all the elements out and you really wanted to get all the elements out because uh, you're starting the game with five elements. However, I feel like that was a bit much and especially at that price tag, uh, they, were, uh, they were a pretty hard sell. However, nowadays, I think that it's a lot better, is that, you know, you can just tell anybody, uh, hey, you got 50 bucks, just buy two of the same starter deck, you're going to get something really good and playable, and you're going to get uh, six packs in there to start building a collection, uh, so it's a lot more of a, like, the barrier to entry is a lot better, and I'd say 50 bucks for starting in any card game is really good, you know, compare that to, say, like, Yu-Gi-Oh!, where you buy uh, three copies of a starter deck for, like, you know, a little over 30, uh, compare that to Pokemon that have their you know, their big bundles where, uh, you know, it's like a, the good competitive decks that they build, the Battle League decks, I think they call them, those are about 30 bucks. Elestral's, you know, a bit more, uh, and uh, but you are getting those extra packs. So uh, I, I would compare it a little more to, it's like a combination between an Elite Trainer Box and one, some of those premium decks. So all of that together, I think it works out pretty well. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, if you picked up any of these and which of the two is your favorite, like I said, I got to stick with Chronodal because I love water, I love big crocs, but however... Pharaohgeist is just absolutely pure vibes, and I cannot wait until we get even more Lunar Elestrals. So once again, thank you to A-Drive and everybody else over at Elestrals for sending these over, and uh, if you'd like to see even more openings, we still got that big old booster box. I gotta wait though, because uh, the roofers have been doing a lot of uh, work around here, so that's why videos have been a bit slow, especially opening videos like this that really need a decent audio throughout. So uh, yeah, just stick around for those, but let me know if that's what you want to see in the comments. Uh, anyway, this is Megatorx, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all later.